Okay, day three, final day of the week, final day of the Cheltenham Festival. Only half the race is from Cheltenham today. Uh, Stu's gone flying off in the helicopter to Fakenham and Utoxter and all sorts of places, but I've got him on the line. We'll have a quick chat through the races and see what we think's going to happen today. What's it like in Utoxter? Doxter. I have been to Utox. It's not far away from me. It's only sort of like 50 miles out the way. It's um, it's it's there's nothing wrong with Utox. Rainbows in black and white. No, I'm sure it's. Uh, I'm, hopefully, it will cheer up here. Well, I'm sure it'll cheer up um, if you get yourself a winner on the last day of the Cheltenham Festival. Cheer up for anybody who gets a winner on the last day of the Cheltenham Festival. And bizarrely, due to the 12 races a day thing that came in a couple of years ago, the schedules still haven't been adjusted. And the Gold Cup is the opening, day, opening race of the day, so it's a little bit unfortunate that. Oh no, it's a nice start to the day. You've only it, got five races. It's a nice start to the day, but it's not really supposed to be the first race, is it? And um, it's also a really... I don't want to start off moaning because people think I've turned into you, but it's a really little field. Last last season, you could have two runners in the Gold Cup, and this year you can only have one. Most people have got more good horses than they, than every season. Their horses get better and better, so I'm sure just about everybody, that, or the top trainers who've got a runner in this, had another one they could have put in, and probably half of them in, went in that um, Ultima Chase, whatever it was called, on day one. But So it's a really small field, and... And, um, it's yeah, no, it is. It's what twelve, thirteen, which is quite a small field, and uh, not everybody in it. I mean, yourself's in there. Duck's not in there. I'm not in there. Who else is not in there? Carl Aragon. Oh, Carl's got one in there. Put um, tricky then. So there's only they've only got one opportunity. Standout King for Darren House looks good. Got some great fault rated one sixty as well. Um, but you've got to look at the top boys for this. They would have had horses uh, purely prime for this race, so I'd go between Paul and Joshua. Fort Lauderdale, unfortunately, I don't think is going to win back-to-back Gold Cups. Um, it hasn't performed at all well this season, so maximum impact for Joshua for me. It's, um, it'd be nice to see Standout King win wouldn't it, wouldn't it, for Darren House, or one of the sort of, I really like to say littler trainers, because I mean, Darren has been around for a long time, hasn't he, and always has a few winners and stuff, but he's, he's not in the in the, in the the top little group, it'd be nice to see somebody somebody like that winning it, and it's a shame for the people that haven't got one in, I mean, Formula One Follis hasn't got a hasn't got a horse in it, and you say Doug hasn't got one in either, it's it's shame, and, and even look at Leon Van Rensburg, I mean, he's normally got a horse that's got a really good chance in this, but the horse he's got in this doesn't look up too much, does it? No, it doesn't, it certainly hasn't got any form of late, I mean, still already 139 mm. from so maybe one previously at the beginning part of the season peaches for david robertson's coming into a bit of form obviously molly is send send done don't really know what it is could be anything after only two runs but no i still think it's going to be joshua's this one yeah, yeah it definitely looks like it's between the top two or three doesn't it really and like we said before once they start falling they don't normally stop, so I'm afraid Fort Lauderdale's probably out of it already, which is a shame because it's nice to see people bringing these horses that have won the race back to run it again the next season, and it might sort of fall off from doing that. Well, the fact that Fort Lauderdale hasn't really done a lot. Greensbank Park looks the obvious one. I'm pretty sure John Morgan told me a couple of seasons ago that he's never won the Gold Cup. Well, strange, blimey. So if that's the case, this has got to be the best chance he'll ever get. So I've got to go with it, haven't you? Really, I'm pretty sure he's never, he said he'd never won the Gold Cup, and we know he didn't win it last year. So I think I think he was looking for his first Gold Cup winner. So I think he might get it. Of wins, always difficult to obtain. Yeah, and of course John plays the, plays it differently to a lot of the rest of us. In fact, that he only runs them when he thinks they're going to win. He doesn't just run them all every week like most of us do. He puts them in no, only when every, every, only when everything's right, and it uh, well, doesn't. Up to it's one on heavy conditions before, so you might be right there. But no, I still think Josh is having that one. Yeah, well. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go for Greensbank Park, and I really would like to see. Uh, I'd like to see Standout King win it as well. Okay, I'll move you on to race 26 on everybody's cards, which is the old Fox Hunter. What do you fancy in that? It's a right, wide, wide open field. Well, it's a wide open. I bet there's a lot of people like me that are really cursing because I've got a horse called Venture to Cognac which I've had to run in the Gold Cup who is on 101 now oh, if he was like one pound like, like that he would be in this and this is what he was in for this was his target and I've had to Clutter run Buck it knows. Clutter Buck knows what he's doing he does yeah and <laughs> I wonder how many other horses are on 101 obviously I haven't been through everybody's list but I bet there's quite a few of us who are all just one pound out of this my horse has got very little chance I wouldn't have thought he's really a two mile six furlong horse so that's not going to win and this, this is one of the races that trainers like you and me would be looking at and thinking this is our chance for a win at Cheltenham so anybody could win this couldn't they Doug's been having a really good 
season over the jump so you just wonder whether he could win it with excellent down maybe that's one of the reasons why he's not coming here to do the commentating this season perhaps he's thinking he jinx himself by commentating so he's staying away so I'm going to awesome. go awesome. I'm going to go for, for Doug to win this and I'm going to go for you to come second with your Disney's Nightmare I reckon you're going to get a 1-2 between the two of them that would be nice again I'll sort of put it out there I don't think Disney's Nightmare act on the ground I could be wrong they all have that bar that says service adaptability or whatever it is but they, don't, they do really don't always seem to be out of run on anything I think my Jamaican right game for its six pull up in a row <laughs> deserves could some, be a some will, kind of credit could be a and it's record, not that but... he's been run over the wrong distance or anything like that he has just been the unluckiest horse of the season by far well he's probably had uh, too many Jamaican woodbines and he's too laid back to be bothered to finish the race that's probably what it is yeah it could do could be <laughs> it, is, it is named after a fun fair ride in uh, Kingston which is, uh, if you do Google it, you'll all find out what it is. But anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> okay. um, I don't know. In this one, really hard. I'd like to say Doug to win it. I don't think yours has got a chance. Talk Leon doesn't ever come anywhere. Muscle Hill, Young's, but no, it is a real open ocean race. I think Brace Rimpat, the only one with a little bit of recent form, is probably the one that's going to win it. Graham likes it. He thinks it's got a chance to do something, so I'll go for Brace for Impact. Well, yeah, I think if, if he does, we'll have to have a steward's inquiry about how many people have got horses rated 101. If he wanted to That's do why it. he won't have stewards, <laughs> just in case there's, they, they, they don't, the, the handicappers don't want stewards. There might be too many people asking questions. <laughs> I'm sure he knows we're only joking, really. Of course we are. <laughs> and that moves us on to the Martin Pipe over two mile four furlongs. It's a handicap hurdle. This is my only chance, I believe, of the whole week, of the whole festival, when my musty mutt looking for its third winner in a row, which was always very, very hard to achieve, but yeah. I really do fancy it. Um, it won easily off of a very low weight 88 hurdle last week. It was going to go over the chase course where it won a group two, but I've decided to make the mistake and probably run it over the hurdle and it'll come nowhere. But musty mutt for me. I think it's a shoe-in. Well, the horse that came third behind your musty mutt last week is the one I've got in this as well. Sunset Rides. I don't know what the weight differential is, but um, I don't think it's enough to turn the table, to be honest. You've got six pound on me, and I think I had a few pounds on Sunset Ride last week. But again, its conditions are not ideal for my horse, so you just never know. But its form's been really good. Like you say, it comes... I should have probably run it in a chase, but I was trying to be greedy, thinking off 110 in a hurdle, it'll, it'll take it easy, but we'll see. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens if they're good enough. They're good enough, i to, to, to run two in this because there's like I say there's, there's not a great deal of two and a half mile races there's a lot of two mile fives but there's not many two and a half and uh, Whip and Lou's won two chases over two and a half miles so far this season's had to go in this hurdle race so I don't think he'll, he'll do any good so I don't think I'm going to win this this is going to be interesting isn't it because I'd like to think that you could win this firm going it says here and I mean you've been sort of like playing your horses horses down down for I that. told you all my horses this week it was the worst news I ever read seeing heavy now that's, got, that's going to put me you'll probably be quite pleased that I'm not going to pick yours anyway really because you probably really don't want me to tip you I'm going to tip somebody that hasn't I haven't tipped yet this week I'm going to go for an outsider Trojan General Daniel French ok yeah Daniel has yeah, no, got a little bit of form in and out nice weight like soft conditions so yeah the only other one is Ricciardo James Hollis who likes very soft conditions that could be a surprise mm. could be a heavy horse and okay. the other one down the bottom of James Hollis Regazzoni I didn't know there was a Formula 1 driver called Regazzoni I thought it was Sounds a sort like of like a pasta sauce yeah I yeah. thought it was Dish. Obviously, uh, Formula One follows is a, an expert on Formula One, and he goes much deeper into it than the rest of us need to know people that we've never heard of. But I still think he's probably going to need a Formula One engine to be winning that off that mark because he's been miles out of the handicap. Of course, you've got two in there, and you've got Can and they do that as well. That one's in uh, topping well, over. Can they do that? I can't find the right distance for him. He, he's a bit of a front runner. And uh, according to trials and everything, uh, he's won a few. But in in this in the race kit, he's just dire, runs off like a whippet, doesn't even get two miles, and then just gives up the ghost. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know. I've kind of put him in there to uh, make sure there is a front runner in it because Musty Mutt needs a bit of pace. Well, you'll get okay. plenty, you'll get plenty uh, of pace in that race because Derek Hinton's got one in, and you've also got that pearl necklace of Obi ones that. Um, that one likes to go early, doesn't it? Yeah, true. They could actually probably outrun my Canyon A do that when you think about it, <laughs> which could just bugger up my plan. <laughs> <laughs> it could, but we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Then we go on to the grand annual chase, which is a two-mile chase. Ultimate of the festival, one of the last chances to get 
one on the board. Yeah, my, my last real one, my last real festival race, because the final race we have is um, a made-up race. This is always the closing race of the of the real festival. I don't know. Another hard one. I mean, it's obviously going to come down to the weight. Um, I mean, you've got, you got 160, 150, 160 hurdlers in here running off of 130s in the chases, so they're all round good horses. Mm. I mean, my Bell Fortune is not going to win. It's a hurdler. I don't know why it's running in this chase race. But uh, obviously, may have put it in there wrong. Looking down the rest of the field. Now, again, sadly, it's going to come from the top end of the lot. And I think probably Joshua is going to win it with hip to be square. Yeah, well, I'm going to yeah. go for the one just above that one. Goo Goo Warrior Queen for the hat trick. But chased home by a mill on a philosopher, Kevin Mina Hankers. That ran really, okay. really, ran really well last uh, couple of times. I kind of think, and don't any of you take disrespectful, I think people like Kevin Mina and Darren Howes, myself, probably you, Carl Arroganti, if we win a race previous, the week previously, and it's a handicap, I, and this is not disrespectful to Graham with ratings, I think getting a £10 or a £12 rating, that horse is not going to follow up. I really don't. I think we're, you know, we're 10 weeks down the line now. The horses are pretty much at their level. And I think if you've won the week before to, to actually follow up in, in our bracket, let's say, mm-hmm. you know, the top boys can do it, but um, I, I find in our bracket, it's very hard to follow up. Yeah, it's um, not easy, is it? But, um... It's not easy. It's <laughs> not an easy game. But we've only got three weeks to go after this one, and then we get a rest. We do, indeed. And everyone can mad breed as usual. And everybody disappears. Nobody speaks to anybody for six weeks, and then really comes yeah, back. That's and the nice part about it. Well, not necessarily this year. Uh, if, if anybody joins your fantasy football competition, we'll have that to keep us going. Oh yeah, I'll have to, we'll have to open a little thread on uh, the board. Set a few people talking about football on a horse racing board. I'm sure it's always good to diversify. Diversify sometimes. Well, we need a little break from talking about horses and breeding and everything, so uh, sometimes it wouldn't do us any harm. It wouldn't, so right? You pick one of this. Oh, yeah, you go, go, warrior queen. Okay, well, good luck with that one. Well, the final race of Cheltenham. £500,000 this is worth at Leon Van Rensburg Cup, the four mile, four furlongs. I think it's a new name, I don't think it was originally called that. No, it was called the Paul um, Moores before, but because they've got that Paul Moores qualifier, the Moores Millions, it was confusing a lot of people. They were thinking it was a, thinking it was the same race, I think, and so they just decided to change this to Leon Van Rensburg. So. so you've obviously got horses in here that don't care about the national. So you've got the Mighty Eight, Smarts Castle, Eastbrook, Jane, Fast Boy, Surf. I mean, because if you win this, it's a Group 1, what, are you going to go up, £20? Yeah, but to be brutally honest, when it comes down to the Grand National again next week, we're probably going to find there's only going to be the top four in the handicap anyway. So it's probably not going to matter too much. If, you, if you've if got, let's say, um, Alex Chimmy's Eck here goes and wins this, probably only go up to 125 or something, and that'll probably still be running off pretty near bottom weight next week anyway. So it doesn't yeah, really no, matter that much. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, it is the unfortunate part of uh, how, this is, how, the, how it just breaks down, I guess. So... Um We'll have to put up with it. I like Darren Thompson's Zelda Mignon off 120. Uh, looks a good chance, but doesn't like the ground. And firm horses don't run on heavy. Mm. Full stop. So now a tricky one. Fast Boy won last week. Won, won well. It was, uh, if I remember rightly, it won about, about eight or nine lengths. It went up about 25 pounds, I think. Surf for Leon Van Rensburg. Again, we're not too sure. It says it's his correct trip for the first time. So it's obviously an out and out four mile, four furlong horse. But I'll go for John Morgan. He has some good horses and he won't be care whether Smart Castle goes up to 180 or not. So Smart Castle for John Morgan for me. Yeah, he's normally, normally the safest bet in these races, isn't he? The long distance things. I'm pretty sure he had one the other season that won, that won, won this race by I wonder if any of these come out of. Um, what's that horse on the flat? The two and a half mile horse on the flat? Oh, Koyak. Yeah. I dare, I dare, I, wonder, I, dare, I dare, I dare. What, nowhere along the line, you know, I'm talking like maybe 20 seasons ago. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought so. You have to let me know, John. I wouldn't have thought so. Is he not supposed to be the, not the opposite way around? Do you not want the, um... Well, they say you don't the want to put your... The mate of the... says it messes up your, your thing, but let's be honest, how do you get a full-speed bar into a, into a, into a jump source when you start the game? Mm. The only way you can do it is by really having a, a sprinter of some sort, aren't you? Have you ever found a two-miler uh, auction that's got a full-speed bar? No. Well, then how, the, how have they got that full-speed bar in there? It's got to have come out of somewhere that's had a full-speed bar. And normally, that's a five foot and six foot on sprint now. But I could be wrong, but John, I'm sure John will put me right in the uh, forums. But yeah, yeah I think, you know, I think they probably breed things in and then breed 
them back out again if you know what I mean. But keep hopefully keeping the bit they wanted. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm going go about this. All, in, a, in the real world, all, all jump horses, even even the, the best jump horses are bred out of flat size anyway. Uh, stayers, the, the old hurdler, but you don't get you don't, you don't get gold cup winners going to stud. No, true. Well, they usually have their knackers jumped off. You might get the old mare that, that, that turns out a, a decent one, but most decent jump horses are out of flat stayers and possibly jumping mares. But, so I, I don't know, but... Um, He's got, lots of, called, one, he's got lots of horses called. called Jay, have, hasn't he? No, I haven't got one in this because I, I wanted to run my um, real long distance one. Although I could get one in the in the in the, the four miler early in the week. It was a naught to one twenty. I could get one in there. I'm getting a bit of weight, so I put that one in there. And the other one I wanted to run in the in the Midlands National, which you've got going up later on because it was it's close to home and it um, it'd be a nice race to win. So I haven't got one for this. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so far to go, yeah. What, you mean you toxed us <laughs> close to your home? Yeah, you toxed us not far away from me. It's only about 40 miles away. I've got a look here, and I've got quite a lot of decent sort of tracks around here. I mean, Cheltenham's only an hour away on the train and whatever, and I've got Warwick and Toaster and Leicester and Hereford and Worcester and all sorts, all sorts of places uh, like that. Not yeah. before Huntington's See, not very nice, far, nice either. part of the green world, which is good. Well, that'll be Cheltenham, then. That'll be 29, all done and dusted. It will. I suppose before um, before we finish, I ought to say that I think the Mighty Eight will win that. Oh, OK. I thought you'd already <laughs> no. tipped one. No, I okay, did, did say John, John Morgan's okay. horses are difficult to uh, to get away from, but I'm going to go for the Mighty Eight in that one. All right, well, we'll see how well we got on. Some of us will be glad we tipped them. Some of them won't. I hope everyone's done really well. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there won't be right. that many different trainers who've got a winner to be honest if we get if we if 20 what is it 29 races yep. if we've got 10 different trainers that have had a winner i'll be surprised i would do you think no, i think there'll be 10 i, I don't, think there'll be more i don't i don't i don't i don't know so there will be more than 10 i think you'll find that the top half of dozen will clear up most of them and then you'll know, probably you might it might be more than 10 but it won't get many people with more than one that are not in the, okay. t- in, the, in, the in the in the top bracket in I mean. the top bracket I mean, if you, well, if you, we'll you know, you've got to look at it, really. I mean, looking at the way thing, I don't want to keep going on about, but you can only really talk about things from your own perspective, can't you? Technically speaking, in, in number of wins, I'm seventh, I think, in the list for the national for the most wins. Never had a winner at a festival, and I think I'll be lucky well, if, I get, if I get one this year. So it's... Well, once it starts, it starts. Um, I've had winners the last two festivals, so I'm obviously just good at it. <laughs> but uh, no, it might like that it's probably going to... Oh, come falling around my ears and I'll win nothing but who knows we'll wait and see okay well as long as the um, commentary box at new toxic doesn't fall around around your ears or the helicopter that's taking you off okay so I will let um, oh, it's me it's got to go off into the commentary box yeah, today you've got and, to go um, off. I've got to catch my yeah. uh, helicopter well enjoy your day at Cheltenham and uh, you can hear my dulcet tones the Midlands National at talks a little bit later in the day okay I will do enjoy that thank you very much and I'll um, goodbye see you next time